All right, let's do a quick introduction of OBS, or as it's officially known, Open Broadcaster Software. But we're gonna call it OBS for short, which that's how it's commonly referred to. Now you can go grab a copy of OBS from the obsproject.com website. That's where you can get it. It is, of course, free to download for Windows, Mac, and even Linux. And this is the software that we're going to be talking about that allows you to live stream to all the popular platforms. And again, no matter what platform you're on. Now, of course, in the description for this video, we talked about minimum requirements. And unfortunately, OBS doesn't really spell out minimum requirements to run their software. What's more important to them, I guess, are minimum requirements to have a successful stream using their software. So if you go to the help section under the estimator, you can go in and kind of spec out what you might or might not have and what resolutions you plan on streaming at, so forth and so on. And it will kind of give you some recommended settings. However, I will point out that they kind of really specify at least a Intel Core i5 or various AMD processors in their list. So they're kind of like they are specifying a minimum as at least to uh, the hardware that you're going to have. And of course, like I mentioned before, the graphics card is an important part of the process. So the beefier your graphics card, the more RAM your graphics card has, the better your results are going to be. Once you've downloaded OBS, which I already have, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pop into it now. And once I've popped in, you can actually see that I've got um, my webcam. So there I am live. And I've also got an application running in the background. I've got Photoshop open big, nice and big in the background, taking up the whole display. Now, how did I do that? Well, basically, I added these things as sources. So I added three sources. I added a source, uh, which is called an application window. So, for example, I just chose uh, Photoshop, which was already running as my window to use. I also added my external webcam, which is a Logitech C930E. And I also added my built-in microphone because I'm using my other microphone to record this video. And last but not least, I created a scene of these things called me and my app. And of course, um, what, well, you might be saying, well, what's a scene versus sources? Sources are the actual pieces of hardware and, 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 of course, media files that you can bring into OBS. So when you click the plus sign, you've got the ability to pretty much bring in anything that's attached to your system. So if you've got a webcam, multiple webcams attached, you can add each one of those as sources. You can capture your a specific display. You can bring in images to use as graphics, lower thirds, um, backdrops, so forth and so on. And, of course, um, depending on your um, setup, you might just want to capture a window versus an entire display. And I'll explain that in just a second. Once you bring in each piece of uh, equipment or uh, media file, then of course you can set up scenes that contain those individual pieces of equipment. So for example, I can say, um, I can make a new scene called just Photoshop. And when I click okay on that, that new scene, I can then add in the same kinds of things that I had before. So I can say, give me a window capture and I want to add an existing one because I don't want to have to recreate it. So we'll add in Photoshop. And of course, I still want people to be able to hear me. So we'll add in audio uh, input capture and we'll add the existing um, internal microphone. And we'll click OK on that. Maybe not. There we go. Click OK on that. And now those two things have been added. So now when I switch between those two scenes, one has the webcam, one doesn't. So that's what scenes are. They're simply a collection of different things that you'd want to be able to quickly switch to without having to manually go and turn things on and off in the sources. Now, um, you'll notice in the uh, main window, like I said, I'm, I'm just capturing Photoshop because perhaps maybe I'm going to do a Photoshop presentation. Now, why wouldn't I just capture the whole desktop? instead of a specific application. Well, that depends on your setup. So in my case, I'm looking at one display. And if I were to say capture the whole display, OBS would kind of do this infinite mirroring thing where it would show me me, showing me, showing me, because OBS would then be kind of looping into itself, capturing the, the whole display, which it's running on. Now you can, of course, capture the whole display or desktop, but it's 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 easier if you have a second display. So that's the first piece of hardware I'm gonna recommend. 
If you plan on doing it all for one computer, at least at a minimum, go ahead and spring for a second monitor. So that way OBS can be on a second monitor and then you're free to add your desktop in as a source in OBS or a display capture. So that way you don't have to worry about um, adding in every single application. You can just switch to that um, or switch applications at will and they will be displayed on the desktop. Now, with that said, once you've got your hardware images and scenes set up, what's next? Well, the, the next thing is to go into the settings to actually configure the streaming part of it. Now, most of this, um, you do not have to touch. Most of these, the defaults are really good and you don't have to really make any changes. However, the main thing you're gonna have to do is go to stream and you're either gonna have to pick from a, an existing streaming service that's set up in the app so they already have things like Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Live built in so you don't have to do anything other than uh, maybe put in your, your custom stream key from Facebook or where, where, wherever platform you are picking. Or if it's not a platform that's listed there, for example, I didn't see Twitter slash Periscope, then I can say custom streaming server, go to my Twitter slash Periscope account, in this case Periscope, and grab my custom URL and custom stream key from the Periscope producer. Once I put those in, then I'm now able to stream. Now, one important piece of security I want to point out is your stream key it should always be kept confidential you should never give that out because that's like giving someone the keys to your house you're letting them stream on your account once you give that out so that's why it's always hidden and it's never shown unless you click the show button it's always hidden and it's usually hidden even on the platforms where you're going to go copy it from because they don't they know how important from a security standpoint that is once you've got that configured with your stream key um, and your platform, then uh, you are pretty much ready to go live. So for example, if I were ready to go live right now, I can just go ahead and click start streaming and it would start streaming live on whichever platform I had set up in the stream, um, in the streaming settings. Now, one last thing I wanna point out that's kind of a nice new feature in OBS. I remember when OBS first came out or when I first started using it anyway, this was pretty much it but they've since then added OBS Studio. And OBS Studio kind of mimics um, what the more higher end professional streaming software does. Uh, for example, if I go into studio mode, you'll notice it kind of gives me this two up display. And what this is telling me is that on the right hand side, this is what's currently being broadcasted live if I were live. So whatever I see on the right hand side, that's exactly what my viewers see. However, on the left hand side, that's where I could go in and kind of get things ready. So for example, if I wanted to switch scenes, notice it only switched it on the left-hand side. If I wanted to add in or turn on different things like add a lower third or add a specific ad or graphic, all of those things would be queued up on the left side. And then when I'm ready for them to go live, I click transition. And that's what sends it over to the, lot, to the other side. And so now people that are watching me live would see what's on the right-hand side. So you can uh, quickly and easily switch back and forth between uh, various uh, scenes, sources, whatever you want, get it all set up on the left side, and then when you're ready, transition it over to the right side, and that's what people see when they go live. Or you can just keep it simple. If I was only gonna show these two things, then I really don't need to be in studio mode because I'm not really switching back and forth between scenes. So that's kind of like a quick overview of OBS. I also promised to mention uh, some recommended hardware. Um, so I already recommended one thing is if you're gonna use one computer, an external display, so that way you can run OBS on one display and anything else you wanna present on the other. The other two pieces I would highly recommend are a good webcam, like an external webcam, like the one I'm using right now, um, and a good external microphone. Now, while your laptop or your computer may have built in a built-in webcam and a built-in microphone, uh, your quality of your broadcast is gonna go up that much more when you bring those items closer. My laptop's sitting way back there and it's off to the side. Um, if I were on the road, maybe I would use the built-in stuff, but if I'm gonna be setting up a streaming setup that I'm gonna use it regularly, then I would always have this being external. So my, uh, my favorite webcam is actually the new Logitech C922. That's a great streaming webcam 
moder moderately priced. As far as microphones are, are concerned, Blue makes a good set of microphones, like the Blue Yeti. Uh, that's a good microphone to have. And I'm using an Apache um, M or a Mic 96 uh, that I kind of use to record videos. Both of those are great mics to be able to use for live streaming, recordings, or whatever you plan on doing. Uh, so get a good, good external mic, get a good external webcam, and more importantly, most importantly, if you're going to use one computer, use an external display. Now, I keep saying if you're going to use one computer, that, that kind of lets you know that you could use two computers. Um, in most of my streaming, I do use a second computer. Why? Because the second computer, let's call it the streaming computer, is the one that runs the streaming software like OBS. Then, using a video capture card, I plug in my demonstration computer so that basically the capture card captures the display out from my laptop into the streaming software. And so the streaming computer is its only job and it's all the CPU is dedicated to streaming. That frees up my demonstration laptop to not be so resource, resource constrained. Now, if you look in the lower right hand corner, OBS does a nice thing by showing you the current CPU usage. And that CPU usage will fluctuate and it's relatively low right now, but you gotta keep in mind, once you start streaming, the bits necessary to drive your processor to stream all this stuff, your CPU usage is going to go up. And for every bit that goes up, that's less CPU you have to use in your applications. So for example, if it went up to 50%, now 50% of my CPU is being used to, to broadcast, and I have 50% less CPU to use in Photoshop. That could hurt. So keep in mind, uh, if you ultimately want to do this the right way, a second computer is highly recommended. So with that, thanks for watching this quick overview of OBS and uh, happy streaming. We'll catch you on the next one.